Hi everyone and welcome to this immensely important uh, video on boundaries. My goodness, whether I'm teaching forensic psychology or introduction to psychology or personal development, I can't tell you enough about boundaries and bring that into your conscious awareness. And so from this moment forward, I want you to really start to consider this concept of boundaries. And on the board here, you can see I've put up four different areas that we need to pay attention to. And so physical boundaries, well, you know, we kind of know what they are. So uh, the edge of your body is where your physical boundary is. And I'm going to invite you to consider who do you let um, into, OK, uh, your physical boundaries, because there's a social space and then that gets reduced when we go into intimate relationships and so that space reduces and we can feel very uncomfortable when somebody's in our uh, physical space that we haven't invited or uh, don't want to be for example you might be on the underground in your city and you're standing too close to somebody who you don't even know and definitely are not enjoying um, but this this physical space is a really important one, first of all, because if you've got a scientific kind of mind, then you're a, a physical type of person, a physical thinker. If I start off physical and then you can see where we go internal and kind of more aesthetic. But let's start physical. So my question to you is, who do you let in to your physical space? Now, I introduced the concept of a house last week so we're actually in the garden at this point we're looking at the fences or in psychology terms defenses you see where where's the edge for you because we're going to go through into psychology in a moment but you know I teach self-esteem and so the people who have a low low self-esteem have terrible boundaries and if you go through this process of, um, of awareness and then checking and then just mediating some of your boundaries, first thing that's going to happen is people with no boundaries are not going to like it. They're going to, you know, kick up against you. And and the more firm you are, the they up the ante. And so I want to prepare you at the sort of the, the grassroots level. I mean, literally the physical level. Um, where are your boundaries now? Another boundary to consider is we're not here to be hit by anybody. And so if somebody hits you, they are probably going to do it again, unless they can really work through that themselves in the first go and then there is some hope. But if somebody's done it a second time, then they're showing you the pattern of them disrespecting your physical boundary. So I said earlier I teach forensics. Um, if you don't address this, it only gets worse. And so I don't want that to happen to you. So your physical boundary, you know, I'm really not even a fan of, you know how some people mess about in the kitchen and they kind of whip each other with the tea towel and, and the drying cloths and, and things like this. And I, I don't think that's very funny because it's kind of a test on your boundary. But are you able to say no? even if it's a jest and of course if you say actually could you not do that I, I don't find that funny then you'll get oh I'm only joking you need to lighten up you're the one with the problem so every time you um, uh, sort of erect or resurrect a boundary expect somebody to come in with trying to take that boundary and that fence down now I'm not saying we're building a process of walls here that's that's not what's happening I'm just getting you to to just um, arrive at the conclusion yourself. Where are your boundaries in all of these mediums? So now let's look at the emotional boundary. Who do you let into your heart? Because some people have just got their you know the heart chakra it's wide open, and they're they're just looking for the next person to love them. But you know, hopefully you'll find somebody. But really, hearts aren't for us to give away. Anyway, we were never meant to give our heart to somebody else. That's the myth of the heart boundary is we were meant to just kind of open it up um, and, and see, be compassionate to other human beings for sure. But then there's a point they'll show you who they are. And at that point, you might think, actually, I don't trust that person with my heart. So I'm, I'm not going to I haven't given it to them. 
So I'm going to be able now to, you know, contain my heart, contain the heart boundary. Because hearts are immensely important, you see. Because if your heart's broken, then your mind will uh, f follow the repercussions of that. Um, so you might have to, to work through the process of a broken heart. But the worst case scenario is that it's coming thick and fast. The boundaries have all been breached by life. And I often say people who have three hits in the short space of time can easily go under. And that's you and me. That's got nothing to do with intelligence at all. That's got to do with the, the mind gets bruised by some of these more difficult experiences. And if you haven't even recovered from the first one and another one comes in and now you're on the floor and you're, you know, you're not even on your knees yet. And then another hit comes in. And so you can see how we go down. That's why this is so essential um, for your psychological health is to consider all of these things. So your emotional boundaries, you know, it's about containing yourself as well. Now, I love this word containment. It's a, uh, something we teach in psychoanalysis and it's like invisible arms around you. Now, your parents are supposed to contain you, not confine you. They're supposed to have these invisible but yet reasonably strong arms containing the home. And what I find as a psychologist is people who have come from homes that are dysfunctional, where there's no containment, there's no boundaries, everything goes and everything's gone, then if you don't have good boundaries on the inside, then you haven't got good boundaries on the outside. And so that's why it's really great that you're watching this video because I'm teaching you um, repair work, really. And, you know, what I want to get towards is you being able to contain yourself on your own, uh, parent yourself, contain your emotions. Again, I don't mean confine. Do you remember in the other video I told you about your journal? That's where you're going to put your emotions that you can't contain. You're going you're gonna to put, if you need to even project them into there. But what you don't want is other people projecting their stuff into you. You know, it's almost as if they kind of, they turn up, you know, they say, oh, I've got a broken heart. And you being compassionate might think, oh, well, I'll just love them and, and, and it will get better. It, it might. Um, but what some people can do is kind of like put their broken heart into you and take your good heart away with them. And then you're broken hearted. And it's like a double whammy because you already knew that when you met them. And so the heart boundary and the heart chakra is a really important um, space. Okay, I appreciate it's a mental space. You can't see it like the physical space. But don't underestimate that it needs to have a boundary. You can't be giving your heart to everybody and just let any old stranger on dating internet or whatever come past. And I see people there so that, that hearts are so open, um, it's, it's not good. Um, and, and then you, th you, you say to them, well, you know, th consider, you know, closing it to 50 percent, at least while you get to know somebody and they struggle with that. They say, well, you're not being very kind and you're not being very friendly. And then you'll find them in a month's time and they say, oh, this terrible thing. I was in this relationship and, you know, blew up and I've lost my heart and I'm devastated. Um, heart boundaries. So I can prevent you from being devastated. So now let's go next to the psychological boundary. This has to do with identity. Now I have made a video called the energy dynamics of a toxic projector. After this video have a look at that. That's on my website and it's all about this concept of what people are projecting into you and then trying to take out of you. Now if somebody's doing that at the mind level that you do not and I do not want for you somebody to be projecting into your mind bringing you down, taking your good stuff. Boundary maintenance is all about watching what somebody else is trying to kind of put into you. Um, and I don't mean this physically, those of you that are having a, a you know a sexual fantasy at this point. I'm talking about energy. I'm talking about when people are disturbed, they try and project that into you. And, you know, you might... The, the problem that I have is I see really good people who are unskilled at this, who then dialogue with somebody who's in this extreme toxic projection 
a downward spiral and they get sucked into that. And so psychologically, your mind needs to be a clean and clear and peaceful place. And so this is about letting you know that you have a mind boundary. Now, in actual fact, your ego monitors your mind boundary. And so if things are coming in or coming um, from the unconscious up and out, that's going to distress you. Your ego is going to use all the mind defences. So the first one is denial. And... You see, it puts up energetic blocks to prevent you from experiencing a reality that's going to overwhelm your psychology. And defence mechanisms are really fascinating. Um, too many to go into here. But just to bring you aware, because those of you that are doing any spiritual work, I mean, I, I honestly mean this, I hear all the time, you know, don't be ego um, or small self, big self. Uh, I mean, for the love of God, do not decay your ego. Uh, I mean, as I say that as somebody who's, you know, uh, I talk to the uh, people in the spiritual community and as a psychologist and a psychoanalyst, actually. Whatever you do, do not decay your ego. If your ego collapses, that's when things get very turbulent on the inside of your mind. You know, you're in a universal, like, a tumble dryer. And very few people know about the ego boundary. It kind of is like your little soldier in the castle. And it's going around the outside of your mind, monitoring incoming um, mon from, from, you know, incoming from other people, incoming from your subconscious mind. And it's protecting you. So the best thing, and it, now it is a hard thing, so I'm not saying it's, a, it, it's an easy thing, but I'm saying it's a simple thing. Let me tell you now the analogy. Your ego needs to come out of the driving seat get in the passenger seat and then you make friends with it but but it doesn't want to do that so it will put up a fight and it uh, you know it uh, is one of the most difficult psychological psychologically energetically insane demanding things that we can have to go through but it is a process it's just still a process a difficult one but simple can you see just out of the driving seat into the passenger seat because you want your ego on your side. I mean, I love my ego. I, I mean, I really love my ego. And it's my best friend and my protector. But it doesn't drive the car. Um, so psychological boundaries are where, um, you know, this thing about health. is, And also this thing about saving the world. Health and saving the world isn't about where somebody suddenly lurches forward and they're some saviour and they're going to save you and save your mind and save the world. It really doesn't work like that. Now, I know people that have ego problems because the moment I say that, they get defensive. Can you see how their ego doesn't want me to say that? It doesn't like the reality that it, it you know, God forbid it might be true. Now, I see it that if I do my homework and fix me, if you do your homework and fix you, and the next person does their homework and fix you, says, won't we all have returned to health and saved our external world as a consequence of saving our internal world? And I often say that you will win all of your external battles on the outside the moment you win your internal battle. And the battle that you might go into or you might be in the middle of it's between your ego and yourself. And at the moment, they're not friends. Now, the way to navigate that is to dialogue. OK, so can you see how all these different subjects I'm talking about, they could be like one, two hour seminars all in their own right. But I'm just giving you a little um, sort of touch of the pattern. And, um, you know, you guys, you'll figure this out. So uh, last boundary, spiritual boundary. People freak out about this. They say, oh, do I need protection? Do I need to wear a crystal in my bra? Um, well, <laughs> you can if you want. Um, but uh, really, it's, um, I think you protect yourself when you become more aware of these things that you can't immediately see, but do still exist. And so that freaks people out because they think, oh my God, then, what can't I see? Is there something attacking me right now? spiritually so high frequency energy yes we don't want 
if there are some kind of more negative energies about in the ether and just be aware when you're in groups with other people by the way those of you that do something called sitting in circle and meditating with others be very aware that your mind boundary is lowered and you might not make the right choices I'm just saying about dating your yoga teacher <laughs> Because when you're practicing spirituality, you are quietening everything down and allowing an external energy to enter in. But let me tell you what happens to minds, whether you're at the football stadium or whether you're sitting in spiritual circle is minds pull together. And that means that you individually, autonomously, is probably going to make better decisions on your own. Put you in a group and the mental average of the group goes down. So you're sitting there consciously thinking, well, I really enjoy these sessions. Yes, you do enjoy the sessions, and I'm not saying don't go to them, but I'm just saying when you come away from those sessions, you need to separate your mind from those people because people go to spiritual sessions for healing. And, you know, when you look at these, all of this stuff that's going on, um, you know, they've had insults, abuse, often heartbreaks, this kind of thing. So in the moment you are healing and sharing, but you're also then going across each other's boundaries energetically, spiritually. There might be a very good reason why you've met that person. There probably is. You don't meet people by accident. But what I'm saying is a lot of people, I just wonder, you know, have they left a chakra open? Because they seem to be hemorrhaging. You know, they go to these circles and then afterwards or they'll go to spiritual fairs or a spiritual conference and it's all good and then it's almost as if the energy ometer just completely switches over to the other side the minute they come away from them well the whole point about boundaries is autonomy if you can maintain yourself physically emotionally mentally spiritually um, then you will be naturally resourced Again, you don't need me. You don't need to remember to take your favourite protective crystal with you. You don't need to practice, you know, heavy mantras. Although, don't, don't get me wrong, mantras are great positive memory programmes to override the ones that may be not um, have been good. But when it comes to boundaries, I want to illuminate these for you today. So it's not that anybody's doing anything wrong. Well, let's hope not on the outside. It's just that you become really aware of how to not expose yourself to the um, opportunity for other people to project into you. That's really what all of this is about. I hope this all helps. I'm going to leave it with you to mull over. You know, I always say the things that I teach, if, if it fits, if it resonates with you, take it on. If it doesn't, don't matter. You know, I'm not attached to you thinking that everything I'm saying is right here. But I am drawing your attention to some key areas that, you know, for me, for you, for everybody, uh, are areas to work on. You know, because if you're intact, if you're resolved, if you get better at this, so let's say something's come in and, and really knocked you sideways. I mean, somebody's infringed all of your boundaries. Let's say you have a real vampire attack. Um, the, the whole point is, how, how, how quickly can you get back up? How, how quickly can you shut these doors, recenter yourself and bring your energy back up? And you think about it. If, if you have no boundaries, then even if you're doing this, you know, this work of healing, it, it kind of can be drifting out. And for the moment, if you're new to this area, um, it, for the moment, I would be um, happier for you if you thought about these different aspects of boundaries. Okay, hope you like the video. Um, the next one is on approval. Do not miss that. And um, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.